Hey, this is Orion with The Versatile Hunter. Welcome back to another video. If this is your first time watching, welcome. What we're gonna go over today is the five must-have things in your blind bag. This can be for ducks, this can be for doves, whatever the case is in hunting in general. Uh, what we're also gonna cover is what else I have in my blind bag. So we're gonna go ahead and check it out and uh, I'm gonna show you what I got in my bag. So I'm gonna go over what's in my blind bag. Uh, this happens to be a tangle-free blind bag, but you don't have to use a specifically marketed bag that's a blind bag. It can be anything you want, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over what's in the top compartment, what's in the main compartment, and what's in the two front compartments. Now some of this stuff may be things that you already have. Maybe you have all this stuff, I don't know. Um, because this is what I have as a loadout for when I go, if I, hey, my buddy calls me, or I decide I wanna go hunting, I can grab this and go, and I don't have to worry about anything, all right? Now, some of it's gonna be your normal stuff like ammo and calls and all of that, right? But then there's gonna be the five things that you must have in a blind bag in order to go out and hunt. So when we open it up, we're gonna get the top compartment here. And what I wanna do is show you what's in there first. So first thing that's in there is I have in a uh, Ziploc bag. Yeah, I know it's technically not waterproof, but it's pretty water resistant. If, if this opens up, we got a problem, but if not, we're good. And what I carry in here is I just keep three spare batteries for my DJI Osmo Action. That's what I've been recording my hunting videos on that you guys have been watching. The second thing that I have in there is I've got my license. So in here, I have my Maryland migratory bird stamp, which is required in order to hunt ducks and other migratory birds in Maryland. If you don't have one of these in Maryland, get one. I have my federal uh, duck stamp. This is the second one I have. I have one for uh, Pennsylvania as well. Even if you don't hunt, duck hunt, but you hunt in general, please buy these. Uh, I think it's 98, 99% of all the funding from these goes towards uh, conservation. So they do help out a lot. Um, the other thing I have then is this is my Maryland license and uh, I have some permits as well in here for hunting within Maryland. So that's all I carry in my top bag. Um, as a standard loadout, sometimes I'll throw some other stuff in there like an extra knife or whatever, but that's usually the go-to. So next thing I'm gonna go over with you is my main compartment. And this is gonna contain a couple of the must-have things and some of just the uh, general things. So the first thing that's in there when it opens up is I have my DJI Osmo Action um, on a head mount. So the majority of the time when I'm filming, I'm using a head mount uh, for you guys. So that's in there to go along with the batteries. And this has its own battery, so I have one battery in there. Now I've got my call lanyard here. I've got a, this is my duck call. Uh, after the season, you can find these really cheap. I paid $3 for this uh, wood duck call at Walmart. On the second drop, I've just got a, I think it's seven in one. Again, like $7 or something at Walmart or Academy, wherever I got it from. Uh, my other drop, I have a uh, wood duck, or not a wood duck, sorry. I have a um, just a standard mallard call, and then I have my goose call on here. Now, I don't always take this with me to the field. Um, it depends on what I'm hunting. So I know that seems kind of weird that I might not always take my, uh, my call lanyard with me. Uh, I only take this out when I'm going out for geese or for puddle ducks. When I'm hunting out on the big water or out on the bay hunting for diver ducks, I let the spread do the work. I haven't had much success out here um, with calls. Now, when I've done some small water, some small numbers, like one or two, the occasional bluebill, the occasional ringneck kind of deal intermixed with my puddle duck hunting, yeah, for sure. I've had some success calling in some bluebills or calling in some ringnecks. Maybe they just came to the spread, not 100% sure, but I'll take it then. But when I go out on the big water diver hunting, I, I like to maintain as little in here as possible because I got all, you know, it's cold, so I'm putting in extra hats, extra gloves, water, some snacks, things like that. But puddle ducks and geese, 100%. Divers, depends on my mood. So the next thing that I have in here, and you might go, hey, yeah, that's required to hunt. I got it, I understand, um, is ammo. Now with ammo, if you're an experienced duck hunter, you're gonna know this already, but I'm assuming that maybe if you're watching this video, you're not. Um, what I do is I always carry at minimum, at minimum, two boxes of ammo, so 50 rounds. And, and uh, when I shoot steel, I shoot number twos. I've been shooting these Rio um, for the last two years. I like them. Uh, they're solid ammo and they're relatively cheap. 
Now, the reason why I keep two boxes on me is because things happen, right? Murphy's Law gets in the way. Um, you have a bad day, you're not shooting well. There's a lot of ducks, you're taking bad shots. Or let's just say that, uh, a different case is you're hunting divers and you end up having to chase them down. So unlike puddle ducks, divers, when you hit them, as the name implies, instead of just laying there helplessly, they'll start diving underwater and sometimes they'll pop up five yards from you. Sometimes they'll pop up 30, 40, 50 yards from where they went under and you're going through rounds. So the most I've ever gone through was on a common merganser hen and I ended up using nine rounds on them. If I only had one box of ammo or I only took out 10 rounds or whatever the case was, I would have been in a world of hurt for the rest of that hunt and I probably wouldn't have recovered that bird. You can make the argument, make better shots, but anyone who duck hunts knows that ducks and geese can be really tough at times. So my suggestion, always have that minimum for two and everyone has a friend in their group who can't shoot very well, so always have ammo ready for them. All right, so at this point you've seen duck calls, ammo, a camera, your license, and you might be thinking, hey, did I just get clickbaited by the versatile hunter? No, I promise you didn't. The next thing are gonna be the five required items, in my opinion, that you need in order to go hunting. So first one, in no particular order, right? This isn't a uh, top five list or anything like that. First one's gonna be ear pro. Guys, wear your ear protection. You, you can't get your hearing back, right? We all think it's okay. Maybe one shot's fine, two shots is fine. But any of you who have ever hunted in a pit blind or gone out on a snow goose hunt and there's 10 up to 15 guys shooting extended tubes, whatever the case is, it's going to ring your ears and you can't get that back. So what I'm currently using are these Walker game ear over the head muffs. They just go over your head like this and then there's a switch here and you rotate it and it turns it on. It actually enhances your hearing. I put those on backwards, but you're going to want to put it towards the microphone. These are pretty good. They're about $60. Uh, if you were to ask me for a recommendation, I wouldn't recommend these ones. I would recommend the Peltor Sports. Uh, I think they run for about $39 and I think they're a, a better overall piece of equipment. But again, wear your hearing protection. It's, it doesn't cost you much and it's not hard to do. You can make the argument it messes with your calling, but you get used to it um, after a while and you don't want to end up deaf and not being able to hear anybody, all right? Well, mop. All right, so the next thing you could maybe make the justification for that you don't need on the hunt. However, when your hunt ends, the next hunt begins. So you got cold, you got hungry, you shot your limit. Well, the next hunt begins and you need to scout. So what I think you should always have in your bag is a pair of binoculars, all right? Now, anyone who's a duck hunter, and if you're a future duck hunter, you're gonna learn real quick that these blind bags, they get soaked, they get muddy, they get messed up. You drop them in the water, it's raining, it gets blood in. I put birds in here sometimes when I got a long walk to go, all right? So I don't recommend that you go out and get a pair of like Zeiss or like the Vortex razors or Leopold or anything like that. Those are great, but not for this situation. What I would personally recommend is a decent pair of relatively cheap binoculars because if these get broken, if these get waterlogged, if they get ice on them and they crack, who cares? You're out like $20. I think I paid $20 for these at a Dick Sporting Goods. They're a 16 by 32. The image quality is fine um, and they let me help you out. So the reason you're gonna want these is one, if you're on the hunt and you're noticing a lot of birds, maybe they're flaring or they're flying away from you, whatever the case is. Now I can get on my binoculars and I can search and find where those birds land, get on my mapping, whether that's Onyx, Base Map, Hunt Stand, Google Maps, whatever your mapping solution is, and identify that land feature and start dropping pins for the next day's hunt. Also, when the hunt's done and you're driving out or you're, you got an hour to scout to find out where are we going tomorrow morning or where are we going the next hunt we can, you can see birds with these that you can't see with the naked eye. So highly recommend them. Don't go out and spend a lot of money because you're liable to break them, but you're going to want these. So that does it for the top and the main compartment of the things that are always in here. Make the justification, yeah, I know, the duck calls got it. Um, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go into the side compartments or the front compartments here. And like I said, they're in no particular order. So when I open up the larger of my two front compartments, I have this Ziploc bag here, all right? Now, this Ziploc bag is medical supplies. Please carry medical equipment on you when you're out there hunting. You gotta remember that what comes out of that end of that gun kills animals. It can kill you, it can hurt you, it can maim, it can harm, it can do a lot of things. Now that could be from a negligent discharge, an accidental discharge, 
or it could be someone trying to cause you bodily harm. We, we saw that uh, on 25 January at Real Foot where two hunters were killed by another duck hunter with a shotgun. So be safe out there, but always have a backup plan. We wear our life vests for a reason. We wear our ear protection for a reason. We tell people where we're going for a reason. And those are all good precautionary measures, but you cannot make this up in the heat of the moment. If you get shot or you break a leg or something happens where you need medical attention, a lot of us, I know personally, we are miles from the boat ramp or 15, 20, 30 minute uh, kayak paddle from the boat ramp. And by the time emergency services get there, a lot of these places where we duck hunt, we don't have cell phone service. So I keep medical on me and I'm gonna show you what they are. I'm not gonna tell you what they're used for. That's for another video. And if you wanna hear about like how to use this medical equipment, medical equipment and maybe some demonstrations, just drop a comment down below. I know not everyone is trained on medical, um, like emergency medical services and stuff like that. So just let me know if you wanna see that and we can accommodate. So going through it in no particular order, uh, one thing I have in here is an emergency blanket. These are cheap. Get an emergency blanket. You can go to Walmart to the camping section. I think these things are like one or two dollars. Now the reason I want this is for not just medical emergencies, but also for survival emergencies. If you run out of gas, if your boat capsizes and you're on the shore, um, these are going to help out if you are going under shock. Hopefully you have someone else there. You're probably not doing it yourself and to help prevent hypothermia. So, Real small, takes up almost no space, emergency blanket. Have one in your blind bag. The next thing I have in here is a tourniquet. This is a military style cat tourniquet, right? You're gonna want this. Your belt's not gonna work. You probably don't, your gunsling's not gonna work. You're not gonna find what you need to find on the shore and you probably don't have it in your boat. So keep one of these. If you get shot in the leg, this is gonna save your life, all right? If you get shot in the arm, this is gonna save your life. Have one of these. Go find one, order them on the internet, do your research, make sure you find a legitimate one and not a counterfeit. But have yourself some kind of medically approved tourniquet in your blind bag, please. So the next thing I have is um, this gauze, it's Chido gauze, but it's like a quick clot. So this is a gauze with a hemorrhaging agent in there. If you get shot, you wanna stop that bleeding, we're gonna get that tourniquet on there, we're gonna get this, um, quick clot going on and we're gonna do what we can in order to get out of there alive without losing blood. I don't have fluids, right? Another thing I have in there is I just have a hemorrhage control um, dressing here. It's not a substitute for a tourniquet, but it will help out a lot, right? We need to control that bleeding. Again, I have more gauze because in my, in my mind, what's happening is I probably got shot from a shotgun 12 gauge most likely, and probably within five yards or wherever my buddy was or wherever my gun fell from. So this is just another roll of gauze. These are real cheap at Walmart. Just go to the Walmart to the first aid section. This can help you out. Now these next two, like I said, I'm not going into how to use them, but these next two, I'm probably not gonna be able to do them myself. But if I have a friend there who knows what they're doing, they can help out. So I have a uh, nasal pharyngeal airway here. On the back, I've got a strip of tape and some lube. Um, again, if I get hit, this is gonna be able to help me out, especially um, if I have friends who know what they're doing. And the last thing that I carry on me is a needle chest decompression. Worst case scenario, I get shot in the chest and I have a long issue. So I carry one of these on me as well. Um, like I said, these last two, I'm probably not gonna be able to do to myself, but the other ones are um, capable of self-care. So if you don't have medical equipment, Find some, buy some, um, and figure out how to use it. Take a class, YouTube it, get, get with a buddy who knows how, right? It legitimately can save your life. Tis but a scratch. A scratch? Your arm's off. All right, so we're down to our last two items. Uh, one is just a simple multi-tool. So this one happens to just be a Gerber. Brand doesn't matter. It can be Gerber, Victorinox, Leatherman, um, whatever the case is. The biggest reason I use this is sometimes you get shells that um, were out there duck hunting, they get slightly rusted, corroded, you have extractor issues, uh, things don't feed right. You can take the screwdriver on here and you can go in and you can pry out a spent shell. On the big water when it gets cold, my gun gets wet. I've had to do it a couple times this season. Yeah, you can upgrade your extractor, maybe that's not the issue, right? Maybe it's not an extractor issue, it's a shell issue. 
So this can save your hunt. If I didn't have this on me, I wouldn't be able to get that shell out and I would be packing it up and calling it a hunt. Also, you got a bunch of other tools on here that can help you out if you have a motor issue, if you have, um, you need to cut something, if you're going underwater, you fall out, you need to cut your waders out, you got a knife here. And of course you got the pliers, which can go far. Um, if you have a hunting dog and they get into a porcupine, you can use these to get the quills out until you can get to a vet. There's a lot of things you can do with these um, and they're, they're not expensive, but they're also not cheap. Don't go to Walmart and buy like the Ozark Trail $2 one. That's probably not gonna be sufficient. Those knives are pretty crap, the steel's crap. Go out and spend like $30, $40 on a Gerber or another brand, Leatherman, and it's gonna help you out. You're gonna really want one of these. Uh, it's one of those tools where you probably don't need it every hunt, but when you need it, you're gonna really be happy that you had it. I can fix it. All right, so we're on to the last thing, and that is going to be a, uh, boar snake or some kind of weapons cleaning kit, right? So hopefully you're not actually cleaning your gun out in the field, field stripping it, oiling it down. That should all be done at the house, right? We got that. That should be all one of the first things you do when you're done with your hunt is to take care of your shotgun, right? Um, however, where we hunt as duck hunters, if you're on a boat, yeah, maybe the exception is different, but where we hunt a lot of times are swampy, muddy areas. We drop our guns, we fall, things happen. And what we don't want to do is have our gun go straight into the mud and we're unable to clean it. A stick's not gonna get that stuff out. Uh, and if you shoot it and there's mud in there, there's a rock in there, you're gonna blow up your gun like this. And I don't know about you, but I'd be really upset with myself. And if you were holding on to that thing, there's a really high possibility of face damage, hand damage, losing you know, one of your fingers, your thumb, potentially blinding yourself or getting uh, permanently scarred. Not to mention the financial costs of buying a new shotgun, which can be anywhere from 500 to 2000 plus dollars. So we don't want to do that. Now, the reason I have the boar snake is I'm not actually a humongous fan of these things when it comes to cleaning at the house, but it's one wrapped up piece of equipment. So basically what a boar snake is, if I can get it out, So boar snake has this end here, right? Now, if it's clogged up, you can't get that through a guide. You can use a stick, you can use whatever, and this is potentially where a ramrod style cleaning kit would come into play better. But this goes through your barrel, and then attached to it is the actual boar snake. And what it does is it has a fluffy part here to clean. It's got bristle wires here to remove anything, and then it keeps going through. So, um, this will help get the mud out in a pinch. If you're not in salt water or whatever, even if you are, you're gonna clean it when you get home. You can rinse this off in the water real quick, keep running it through until you know you no longer have any um, obstructions in the gun. Now, if you ever have to use this, make sure you're gonna have to take off your barrel, so get somewhere safe so you're not gonna lose any pieces to your gun. Um, clean your gun, look through it. If you have to, submerse, it in, submerse the barrel in water, scrub it out, and run this thing through until it's clean. You can get back on the oil and the solvents and everything when you get to the house, all right? So those are my five things that I think you need to have in order to go hunting safely and effectively. All right, guys, so that was the end of the video. Those are my five things that I think you need to have in a blind bag in order to be effective and safe out on a hunt. Let me know down below. Do you agree or disagree with me? What are the five things or whatever your number is that you think you need to have a blind bag? What things do you think I had wrong? What things do you think that I'm missing? Let me know down below so can, I can improve my hunting and you can improve yours as well. If you made it this far and you liked the video, hit the like button. I'd really appreciate it. And if you liked it, there's no reason not to hit the like button. Until the next time, I'm the Versatile Hunter and I'll see you out there. Be safe, have fun, and remember to join a conservation organization. I've put hyperlinks down in the comments, or sorry, down in the description. Um, go ahead, you can check those out. See which organization works best for you. Join it. Let me know down below who you decided to join. Thanks for watching.